Hello everybody, welcome back to Painting Fundamentals. I'm Joe Carswell, your instructor, and this lesson is going to cover several different surfaces that we're painting on and the condition of those surfaces and how to get them ready for a coating. There's a lot of different information and as a painter, it's very important that we understand this information and can identify different surfaces and the processes and materials that we need to use to get to our final coat. So let's get right into it. First, a thank you to Benjamin Moore for giving us the support that has allowed us to bring this lesson to you at no cost. Let's look at some different materials that are common to be coated or painted. Starting with our magic sauce, primer is going to be the magic ingredient that will allow us to bond paint to almost any surface. Primers are a great start. They're a good base coat. They cannot be used as a finished or top coat, but what they do is they're going to adhere to whatever surface we're working on, as long as that is a solid and stable and prepared surface. And it is going to work as a glue that will glue the top coat to that surface. A lot of primers are multi-use. I have a primer here, and this is not only interior and exterior use, but it is also good for it as siding, drywall and wood trim. So this is a general purpose primer that we can use in a lot of different situations. This primer also works as a sealer. So that's going to seal up that surface, prevent uh, any bleed through of stains coming from the base surface into our final coat of paint. That's an important process as well with certain materials, we'll get into that. Let's look at some of these materials. Raw wood is a common material for us to use or coat over. These days, we don't have a lot of raw wood to paint. A lot of manufacturers, uh, as in these trim pieces here, are priming their wood products before they send them out. These are both wood materials, but they have a coated primer on them. These are ready to accept a top coat with no other finishing or surface uh, considerations. But if you do have raw wood, Keep in mind, there will be some prep to do. You'll have to sand a little bit, not too much. You don't want to over sand your raw wood, but you want to sand it enough to then prime it. Now your primer is going to bond or glue itself to the wood, and then your top coat will glue itself to the primer. This is the process. Also, primer is going to bring out any defects that are in the surface. So the primer gives you an opportunity to sort of evaluate what's happening. And now we can add fillers and some final sanding before we prime again, then we have our top coat. One of your most difficult surfaces to coat will be concrete and masonry. These have a very rough surface to them and they have a lot of dimension to them. So we need special tools, heavy nap rollers, large brushes, and we need special primers to work with concrete and masonry. Keep in mind, this is also a sealing process, but once this surface is prepped, that means stable with no uh, loose material on it, we might need to wash it, we might need to blast it, we might just need to broom it. We can then prime it to get it to where it can then accept a top coat. The beauty of primers is no matter what the surface is below, once the primer is on there, we can treat it as if it is a prime surface, and then it can accept a lot of different coatings. Drywall is a material that might be the most common one that a painter comes in contact with. You're going to work with a lot of square feet of drywall, and new drywall can be challenging. There's several materials going on here. We're going to get into this in more depth later, but keep in mind that drywall is going to be a combination of a board that is made with gypsum and it has a paper facing on it. This paper facing is somewhat fragile. It needs a coat of a special primer on it. And there's also fillers that have been added. If you see the ceiling, it has been finished. It's ready for a primer. So you have multiple materials on the same surface. This is the process of drywall. We have special considerations here, special processes, and we need a primer that can do the job. It's really important that our surfaces are stable before we add primer to them. What does stable mean? It means that it's a solid surface with no loose material on it. 
old paint can fail and turn into this loose material. We have some options for removing loose paint and that is the prep process before we can even start priming. Priming uh, or primer sticks to a lot of surfaces, but it won't stick to loose paint. We can scrape, so we can mechanically scrape and remove this loose material. We can pressure wash this surface until we get down to something solid, or we could sand the surface. Keep in mind, if you are physically removing loose or old paint from a surface, it might be lead-based paint. Paint that predates a certain year in the 70s could be lead-based. It might have lead in it. This is bad for your health. There are special considerations for this paint and there are some legal issues with removing it. If a surface is shiny, it's not going to take paint very well. We need to dull this surface before we can add even a primer or a top coat. We generally do this by sanding. This is a mechanical process that will take that shine off. Our surface here, if you look at the image, is a combination of matte stripes and shiny stripes. If I needed to coat over the surface, I would not be worried about the flat or matte stripes, but I would have to deal with these glossy stripes before I could even prime it. And to do that, I would sand the gloss down to the matte equivalent or dull finish. Drywall is one of the most common materials we will have to coat on. We need to get into some of the finishes on drywall and textures that you'll run into. But to start with, I wanna give a little bit of a primer into drywall, how it's installed and the materials that are used. So drywall is a system that combines boards that are made of gypsum with paper facing on them. Those boards make up the hard surface. And this is sort of a fragile material, but once it's up, it becomes a very nice solid surface that can cover walls and ceilings. Also, there's a bunch of lines or seams wherever these boards come together. The boards are generally a four foot by eight foot, four foot by 10 or 12 foot board. And where these come together makes seams and joints. We're going to use a combination of a paper or fiberglass tape and a joint compound, which is a gypsum, you might hear the term mud used. It's a sort of a paste. The paste will be applied over the tape. This is going to fill and strengthen the whole system to smooth it out into one solid surface. So whatever you're looking at is a bunch of separate boards with a bunch of seams that have been filled with this tape and joint compound. Here is a closer look at one of those seams that you'll find in between two drywall boards. These boards are held up to the framing with special fasteners. We're gonna call them drywall screws. And these drywall screws are gonna be at regular intervals on all of the boards. That's on the edges and in the middle or in the field. Every one of these screws will have to be covered with joint compound and sanded in the end level to make them disappear. Inside corners are a feature of drywall where a vertical surface would come in to play with a horizontal surface. These will be filled or seamed just like the flat surfaces with the same materials, but you're looking at a 90 degree condition here. Another 90 degree condition you'll find is an outside corner. These will be reinforced with special parts called corner beads. They might be metal, they might be vinyl. These will be nailed on or stapled on, and then they will be coated with the same joint compound. Let me say this class is not a lesson in drywall installation, but there's certain terms that we have to understand to get through our levels of finish. So these terms will help us understand how to set this up and what we're looking for when it comes time to coat over these. The tape coat is one of the most basic drywall processes. You might hear this called fire taping and tape coats are embedding the tape into joint compounds. So here's what happens. You have a joint between two boards and there's a long line. You're going to fill that line with joint compound using a drywall knife. You're then going to push the paper tape into that compound and then you're going to scrape it flat or scrape it level. This is your basic 
process for drywall. And you have, if you think about it, you have in a normal size room, all those four by eight, four by 10, four by 12 foot sheets are going to have a lot of lines where they come together. Every one of these lines needs to be covered with a tape coat. The next coat for our drywall is going to be the embed coat. Now we're trying to cover our tape that we have laid on all of our seams. And we're also going to cover our corner beads, if we have any, that's for our outside corners. And we'll also put a coat on every fastener we find. A skim coat is a very thin coat that will follow up after our tape coat and our embed coat. These are thin coats and it's starting to spread out this coverage over a larger area. Skim coats are very important when we're trying to get to a level of finish that has no defects in it. So our levels or quality of finish is going to go up based on the number of skim coats that we apply. Skim coats are very important in the finished stages of our drywall, but we're not done yet. We still need to sand so that that feathered edge goes invisible. You will see me do this on this wall. We went through the drywall phases here, and right before we were able to prime this wall, I had to sand all those skim coat edges down so that they would uh, coat properly. What you don't want to see is all the lines of all the compound that you're applying. Now that we know a little bit about the drywall process and the materials we use to perform this process, we can talk about the levels of finish. The levels run from level zero to level five, that's six levels, and they increase in quality as the numbers go up. The ASTM, or American Society of Testing and Materials, set these standards. Let's take a closer look at them. Level zero is just like it sounds. It's a very simple, basic installation of the drywall boards only with fasteners. Level one adds our tape and our mud or joint compound, but only on the flat seams and the inside corners. Level two is going to add to our level one. Level two adds a coat over our flat joints and our inside corners. And it also adds a coat over our fasteners and our outside corners. Level three simply adds a skim coat over all of these areas once again. As you can see here, this area that's getting coated is spreading, it's, it's growing, and all of this makes for a better quality job in the end, and it leads to a more flat or aesthetic look of the surface. A level four finish becomes a high quality finish. This is going to have three coats over the corner boards and the fasteners. All of your flat seams are going to start with a level two finish. We're going to add two more skim coats over that. All of your inside corners are going to be a level two finish plus one more coat. A level five finish is one of the best finishes you can have. It requires a lot of time and application of material. Once we get to a level four, we can increase it to a level five by putting an entire skim coat over the whole area. This requires a lot of skill by the person that's applying it. And a lot of times this skim coat will be applied by thinning the compound and then rolling it on, then troweling it off with a very large knife. Standard building practice uses a lot of drywall textures. So once we've achieved a certain level of finish for our drywall, we can then add a texture. Typical start for a drywall texture would be a base of a level three finish. That's going to have pretty much a skim coat over everything. And you're going to use special tools to texture with. There's several different textures. Some are more common than others, and some are common per region. I'm going to cover just a few here, but keep in mind there is a whole lot of textures. This becomes a very creative and artistic process at some point. There are even some finishes that I don't know about. So the materials and tools we will use to texture are very basic. We're going to use a thinned version of joint compound. We're going to thin it with water and we're going to use a gun with a hopper on it. This is a special tool that will spray texture onto a surface. If you've ever used an air sprayer for paint, this is a very primitive version of that. That large container on top of this, basically an air gun, takes pressurized air from a compressor and turns 
pretty much what's the consistency of pancake batter and blows it out of the nozzle. That's how we're creating the texture. That might help you understand some of these textures we're getting ready to go over. Orange peel is pretty much what comes out of the gun at a specific pressure and with a specific size nozzle on it. Orange peel is a spattering, sort of a uh, splattered look, and that's how it's coming out of the gun. We're going to spray this material out onto the surface as evenly but randomly as possible, and this is the result of that. We're going to call it orange peel. Knockdown is an extra step once we achieve an orange peel. If we don't like that look, we can tool it with a flat knife, a very large flat knife, running it over that very gently, and we end up with what's called a knockdown. So you see all of that orange peel spatter with a flat top on it. This is called knockdown. Popcorn texture used to be a common sealing application. This has special materials in it that create a sound deadening effect on ceilings. Popcorn texture is not as common as it used to be, but it has a couple of advantages. I mentioned one, it will deaden sound in a room. It also has a hiding ability. Your ceiling is one of your hardest places to hide your defects in your drywall, and popcorn texture helps to hide any defects or problems with lines or seams. It's one thing to mention that popcorn texture has a lot of depth to it, which means that now painting it becomes an issue. This is one of the deepest, most dimensional textures you'll find inside of a structure, and it requires special tools like masonry or concrete to do it well or to coat it well. A smooth texture on a surface is one of the hardest to achieve. It requires a lot of skill by the drywall installers and the finishers. Every step has to be right. We're talking here about a level four or a level five finish, and these will take paint well, but any defects will show up in a smooth wall finish. I come from North Carolina, and in North Carolina, this is a standard. It's expected in any home or building that you're in. You have to know how to do this if you install drywall. Now that I'm in Colorado, this becomes a high-end finish. So this becomes something that you have to request and that you pay more money for. But the bottom line is this is one of the hardest finishes to achieve. Here's a full review of our lesson. Let me do a summary of this. Our drywall materials are gypsum boards with paper faces, screws to hang them, and then joint compound and tape for all the seams. Drywall finishes are zero through five, and zero is your most basic, five is going to be your most coats and your highest quality. Fasteners, seams, and corners need to be covered with joint compound for a level two finish or above. You might hear fire taping used for rough functional taping of joints and seams. We'll call this level one. We need at least a level three finish before we apply a texture. Some textures not only require the application of the material, but then we're going to tool it after. Wood, new drywall, even masonry and concrete, all of these materials require a primer before we can apply top coats of paint. We can't paint a glossy finish. We have to dull it by sanding first. This is a list of terms used when we're talking about surface prep, drywall, and texturing. And as always, I like to stress this idea of learning the language of building and using it on the job site. So I hope you've learned something about this idea of different surfaces, what we need to do to get them ready for paint, a little something about drywall, a lot about primer, and a lot about the steps and considerations we need to take before we can actually do that final top coat. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved. If you provide instruction in the construction trades and have a need for videos like these, please contact us at tradeskillsu.com.